Welcome to the Justice Journal Podcast. I'm Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert. I hope you enjoy this podcast series where we discuss important public safety issues and provide insight into who we are as an office and what we do both in the courtroom and in the community to provide the highest level of public safety through prosecution, prevention, and innovation. Welcome to the Justice Journal podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Oreo. In recognition of National Crime Victims' Rights Week, today's episode will highlight and inform the public about the District Attorney's Victim Witness Assistant Program. Today's discussion will be on what support services our victim advocates provide and how they collaborate with other agencies during times of crisis. I'm joined by our Victim Witness Assistance Program Manager, Nina Acosta, and one of our victim advocates, Michelle Husbands. Welcome, Nina and Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Can I have each of you introduce yourselves? So tell us a little bit about your background and your current roles within the office. And Nina, we'll kind of start with you. Yes, my name is Nina Ocosta. I am a licensed clinical social worker. My role is the Victim Witness Program Manager. So I manage the victim advocates and our claims unit that are housed within the district attorney's office. Um, I've been a social worker for just about 18 years now. My background started in child welfare uh, or child protective services, as it's uh, commonly known. And then I spent some time with homeless services, and I uh, became the program manager at Victim Witness in October of 2020. Great. Michelle? Hi, my name is Michelle Husbands. I am a master social worker at the district attorney's office victim witness unit. And I have been here for 15 years. Um, I started with the county back in 2002 in Child Protective Services. And my role currently is um, working with the victims of minority homicide in Sacramento and also as the mass victimization advocate. Great. Thanks both. Nina, I'm going to have you start us off with just giving us a big picture about what the District Attorney's Victim Witness Assistance Program does. So who do you assist? what services are provided on a regular basis, and so on. The Victims Assistance Program in the Sacramento County District Attorney's Office encompasses um, advocates and claim specialists. Both serve victims of crime within Sacramento County. That means that we are part of the situation with any victims that are referred to our office um, or not referred to our office that have been a victim of crime. Our office connects them with the California Victims Compensation Board for assistance through uh, different services that the California Victims Compensation Board offers. We act as a conduit between our office and their office. The advocates on a daily basis will assist victims throughout the criminal justice process. Uh, Victims' rights are codified in the California Constitution. They're commonly known as Marzi's Law. They're in Article 1, Section 28. And they provide a list of all of the victims' rights that they're afforded. And the advocates in my office and make sure that those rights are upheld within the criminal justice system. They are with the victims of crime throughout the whole process, sometimes from the point of contact with law enforcement all the way through to a conviction if the case is referred to our office for prosecution. Um, But our cases don't end there. We are constantly working with victims of crime. If folks have issues 5, 10, even 20 years down the road, they can always reach out to one of our advocates and get assistance with connecting to local resources to assist them through whatever uh, challenges that have come up that are related to the crime. Okay, great. Let's focus on this term, mass victimization trauma. I'll ask you both, what is that and what can you tell us about it? Mass victimization is um, the definition that we use for our program purposes is defined as a single criminal incident in which a person or persons um, commits a crime that results in the death of three or more people, excluding the perpetrator, or a crime that was intended to kill three or more people, again, excluding the perpetrator, and that results in injuries to other individuals. Or if the incident um, took place in, and it had a large, ability to affect many people um, within the area where the incident happened. 
So when it comes to these mass victimization trauma incidents, how is that different and unique than the regular victim advocate services that are provided? Typically, it's the magnitude of the incident and how the how it affects the community. We're usually looking at a larger number of individuals that are involved. And when it is categorized as a mass incident, there are certain protocols that then um, get put into place in order to address the um, size of the incident. And you will also see an increase in the responses from various agencies. And can that include indirect victims, people who witnessed it, but weren't actual victims themselves? Correct. So when we talk about um, victims of a mass incident, uh, we're not only looking at people who may have possibly gotten physically injured, but also the emotional um, impact and psychological impact on individuals who were present trying to escape um, or leave the area. Um, and then, and then also individuals who may be also watching it as it happens that are not directly in the location. Well, what about the mass victim crisis response team? And Michelle, I'm going to have you again, if you can explain what is the uh, response team, such as how is it created? Who is involved? How does it work? Whatever you can tell us about what that team is and what it does. So in 2019, um, the Victim Witness Program, we decided to um, we decided to access the grant through Cal OES for the mass victimization advocate. Um, Cal OES had determined that the Victim Witness Centers in California should have protocols in place for mass victimization incidents because of the increase that they were seeing and the involvement that the Victim Witness Centers was increasing in those incidents. And so they created a grant um, and had the various counties in California um, access this grant. And then they were able to divide the, the California into regions, eight regions, and have smaller counties connected with the larger counties and neighboring counties so that they're able to assist each other in case a mass victimization incident happened and the, the local um, resources are overwhelmed. So for us here in Sacramento, we're in the Sierra Nevada North region and we meet on a quarterly basis so that we are familiar with each other. And then we have um, a statewide meeting that is also on a quarterly basis with all the other mass victimization advocates in California. Interesting. So are you, are you our mass victim advocate? I am your mass victimization advocate. And part of that is that I helped create the protocols within our office to develop the mass victimization crisis response team, which is our local team within our unit made up of other victim advocates. And the idea is that if an incident did occur in Sacramento, that we are able to respond to what is called either the Family Reunification Center or the Family Assistance Center in a support role to assist the community and the lead agency that's um, setting those places up. Okay, and so generally, can you explain or uh, let us know the different agencies that are typically involved in this response team? Absolutely. At the Family Reunification Center or the Family Assistance Center, um, you will typically have victim services. Um, you will also have a response team. Um, sometimes there's in individuals from law enforcement, from FBI, depending on the type of incident that it is. You can also have local social services, um, behavioral health and mental health services, and local community agencies that can help with um, different everyday needs that the families may have. So for an example, um, when I responded to Vegas, the DMV was at the location um, at the Family Assistance Center in Vegas because people were leaving 
they had left all of their um, property and everything there. So they didn't have access to driver's license. They were lost. And so DMV was on site in order to assist people to um, replace those items quickly, their driver's license, because people needed them to travel and they could not access them at that time. Wow. So it sounds like the response might vary a little bit, a little bit depending on the uh, crisis incident that, that took place. Yes. So it depends on the size of the incident, the type of incident that it was. Um, that can also determine what agencies are involved. And I should say that um, our, our program becomes involved in crime-related mass incidents. So we don't respond necessarily to fires um, and things like that, or natural disasters. Our focus, the mass victimization crisis response team focus will be on um, a criminal act. Okay, so I'm gonna ask both of you, Nina and Michelle, what do you want to share about your personal and professional experiences after participating in this type of response? So either one of you. One of the things that we want to express to the community is that it is a community event. And so there are people that might have stress reactions or trauma reactions that they don't necessarily connect to the event because they weren't physically present. And we want to let the community know that the community was harmed in a any type of mass incident like this. The community is harmed and together the community comes together to heal. And that we have resources that are available. And if you find yourself having some sort of reactions and you're not quite sure if it's because of what you have seen, what you have heard, even watching the news coverage, as Michelle said, can have an impact on you because it's in your community. And this is the first situation that's happened in Sacramento. So we want to encourage people to reach out to our office and talk to us. We have resources within the community that we can connect you with to really kind of explore your feelings about what's going on. Um, and some of those reactions can look like a sudden lack of concentration or easily distracted or changes in appetite. Um, some of these things that you might think are attributed to something else, but they didn't really um, become noticeable until after this event. Reach out to us and, and we can connect you with people that will be able to work that through with you and be able to help you to understand why you might be having that reaction and what you can do with that. Okay, Michelle? I might echo what Nina has said. I think for me, it would be um, don't be hesitant to reach out for help, um, even if it's just to one person, um, to let them know that you do need assistance and we are available for um, everyone. There's also different resources online that you can access. And like Nina said, we are here to assist the community. And what about? I think, Nina, you had mentioned this um, at some point that if people aren't ready immediately after that, there are still services after the fact. So if it takes people a while to process, uh, can you talk about that? So are services available ongoing? Absolutely. That, that's correct. Um, uh, the victim witness services, we're available. Our cases don't end. And so this is a mass incident event, or it's been categorized, categorized that way in our office. So that means that, you know, if in a month from now you realize that maybe you're having some responses to that, or maybe a family member or a friend has talked to somebody and they're not quite sure how to steer them to assistance, you can call us and ask us what's available. We can get you um, services that are in your area, like we stated before. We have a lot of community partners all over Sacramento County. And so we are able to be that conduit for you and to really identify what the, the needs are based on what's happening for each individual. Uh, traumatic responses or any type of responses to this type of event are going to vary by individual and the services and the needs of each individual is going to vary based on their situation. So we would just encourage everyone to reach out to us. We are available to provide that assistance and uh, we would be able to connect you with the appropriate community resources and, and assistance. And we do have resources on our office website at uh, sacda.org under our victim witness tab. So there are a lot of information is there as well. Uh, well, unless either you, um, Nina or Michelle, have anything else to add, um, I think we'll close there. 
Well, thank you both for sharing the information. I think it's important for the community to know what resources are available and how our office provides those services to those who need them. So thanks very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find all of the Justice Journal podcasts on our website at sacda.org, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube.